Let me ask you this. Was your mother aware and able to agree with you? Or she saw you as coming with something, not only that she was concerned about your safety, but did you feel as though she agreed with you and your or your dad, or did you feel completely alone? Um, my mother was my mother was about my safety. That was my mother. My mother was about my safety. My mother was. Um, I, I went to Sunday school. I was in the choir. I'm the uh, first girl in a Caribbean African family. I'm yeah. the first girl. So with that comes an expectation and and a promise, you yes. know. So. Yeah. Uh, my parents come from Barbados. They are Caribbean Africans, although they would not describe themselves as such. Uh -huh. My generation doesn't describe themselves as that. They're described uh -huh. as West Indians or Barbadians, uh -huh. you know. Yes. But I know they're African. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'd be calling people names, you know, but my mother was concerned. But my father was different. My father, of course, he's an African man in Europe. So he's experiencing the world a certain kind of way. My mother would have uh, uh, nurtured me to be safe, to be a good girl. Right. To be, you know, to have the, the Caribbean aspects. So, you know, this is what you do. Um, you know, you, you know, you cook like this, you carry yourself like this, you know, all of the conditioning of a good girl. Now, bubbling up inside of me is a revolutionary, you know what I mean? I'm like, ah! My father was a, a different kind of African in that he was a philosopher. I didn't know that's what you called it. Um, he was an African. You know, Africans speak in parables. They always say things like, you know, yes, when tongue, teeth and tongue will meet sometimes. I'm like, what are you talking about? You know? Yeah. So my dad brought parables and, and would say things to us like, you know, wanna believe in wanna mind that so and so and so. Now that kind of expression wasn't taught to me in school. Wanna believe in wanna mind? What is that? It's only as I got older, I'm like, ah, you know, there's a there's an aspect, there's a consciousness, there's a there's a language my father's speaking that comes from somewhere he may not even know where, but suddenly was bringing a different kind of way of speaking that I had to unravel. And I'd be like, well, why don't you just speak plain English so I can understand what you're saying? But I had to unravel it. Yeah. Uh, he also played a lot of um, uh, music that had philosophies, Marcus Garvey philosophies. Uh, he played Fela Kuti. He, he brought uh, uh, he, I, I, Nina Simone. Like people like who were talking about you know, a revolution, but they weren't necessarily calling it. They were talking about a, an injustice and a pain and a, and, and, a, and a right. And the civil rights movement was going on and I was seeing what was happening to people coming into the UK through the, through the school system and how they would be streamed into educationally subnormal streams, like because they speak with an accent, they must be educationally subnormal because they have a, a swagger, they must be, you know, they're deviant. You know, like, like, well, I was attracted to it. Yeah, yeah. I was attracted to it. I was like, I don't know what that is, but I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, mm. that's a little bit about me. I mean, of course, a lot has happened be between that time of me being a child and me being an adult, but that's kind of where some things were birthed in me and I didn't have a name for them. I just had an awakening. There was an awakening happening.